Hi, Robin Gary here from the Doherty Art Center. Welcome to part two of Making a Flower Brick. A quick recap, we were letting our slabs dry so that we could build the flower brick with an inset top and bottom and long sides and short sides. And now we are going to put those slabs together using coils and add our cobalt carbonate design. I'm rolling out coils for all of the attachments. You'll see that I spray the canvas with a little bit of water so that I can roll the coils in and out of that moisture to prevent cracking. I score the slabs, add water, and start adding the coils. The coils you see here are the top slab and bottom slab supports. I use the brush to clean up the extra slip I use both a rib, a wood tool, like a modeling tool, and a brush to clean. In addition to the coils that are used to support the top and bottom slabs of the brick, you will also need to use coils, small ones, for all the joins around the brick. Here you can see how this brick is coming together and those larger coils that work themselves around the whole brick are what the top slab and the bottom slab will rest on. Here the brick is upside down. I'm adding the bottom slab. It's a little long so I pull it off and adjust the length with a knife and then I compress the edges all the way around and all the joins using that modeling tool. It's time to add the main circle of the top slab. I've chosen the center of the two circle cutters because I like the size with respect to the length of the flower brick top. After I have cut that circle in, I divide up each side of that length into nine spots where I can add the small stem holes. This slab isn't super dry yet and the tool that I chose is leaving a bit of extra clay around each of the holes. I may or may not keep that as a design idea. After all the holes are actually in, I do decide to keep that extra clay on the top of the slab. I think it'll make it fun as a texture. I've scored and added water to the top coils. I lay down the top slab, which is stiff enough not to sag, and I do compress all of the edges all the way around. I also do a little bit of cleanup work from the joins. I do my final cleanup and compression using all kinds of tools like ribs, sponges, chamois, brushes. You can see I did decide to leave the extra clay from the hole punch tool. Original Delftware used tin glaze to make it very white. For me instead, I'm just using three coats of a bright white underglaze. Next, we bisque fire the piece so that we can add our cobalt design. On the bisque piece, I start with a pencil design on top of the white underglaze. I will then go over these lines with brush strokes of cobalt carbonate. I always like to test the brushes I'm going to use. You can see the cobalt carbonate is kind of purple. It's a very dry process. So even though there's water in it, the brushes dry out quickly. These are the ones I used for the first side. I didn't really like how the first brushes worked, so I tried brushes that are better for line work. They have longer bristles. They held on to the cobalt carbonate much better. I really did like how the new brushes worked as I was drawing the cactus and the mountains and clouds. The cobalt brushwork is done and now I'm ready for a clear glaze. When you're handling the piece, 
The cobalt is very dusty, so be careful not to smudge it. Here's the piece after glaze firing. Well, thank you for watching, and you can find more from the Doherty Art Center on this page.